First question for Dan Evans, Eleonor. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Uh, How does that rate among your days in tennis then? Must be uh, pretty high up. Yeah, it was a good one. Um, it was a long day, obviously, just finished doubles, but um, yeah, I, it felt a bit funny playing doubles after, you know, obviously what, what happened in the first match. So it was, um, you know, it was good to, to win and sort of just, just put the put the first match sort of behind me and then can focus on tomorrow now. It's uh yeah, you know, it's um it's difficult, obviously a bit more attention and yeah, you know, I don't not not so fond of that. So it's just, you know, hopefully focus on tomorrow. Um and yeah, I'm obviously happy, but it's uh you know, I'm still in the tournament and after the tournament I'll look back at you know, what a good day it was and yeah, it was obviously an um, amazing feeling to win and, and, uh, and to come through. Rob? Dan, uh, Novak's got the capacity to turn around any losing position. At what stage did you think you really had his number? I wouldn't say the match point, but was there a point when you thought, I've got him today, I can really have his beating? No, I, I, felt, I felt comfortable from 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 the outset uh i didn't feel too you know in myself i felt that very good um but more importantly i didn't feel he was he was being too aggressive making me you know pushing me back too much i actually thought i, I was comfortable in the points i hit my forearm very well and and when i got the first set and then you know i had to deal with a bit a bit of adversity at three love and and, and just hang in there, you know. Uh, I guess when I held at 5-4 after the set point, I think uh, I could, I sort of sensed he was, he really wanted that, obviously he wanted the point, but, you know, he was, he made a, a, a big error and I, I felt that was because of the pressure I was applying on him and he felt he needed to take that, that point there and then. And, and then I, you know, I, I felt pretty relaxed up until probably 40-15, to be honest, you know, it was, uh, he come at me at 40-15 and I felt, you know, just, just give it a good go there. And then yeah, it, was, it was a nice feeling when it was over. And, you know, like I said, it's just, um, it's a great day. And, you know, we've got some more matches to, to go this week. Yeah. Paul? Dan, I, I just wonder what you might have thought if, um, if a year or two ago, someone had said to you you were going to make your first Masters Series singles quarterfinal on clay. Would you would you have thought you know, that that's just not going to happen or what? Uh, yeah, obviously it's not my favourite surface, uh, but I think the conditions have actually suited me this week. It's not been very warm. The ball stayed low. Uh, I'm I'm moving way better on the on the clay, and that's that's definitely helped. Andrew, hey Dan, I'm just sort of curious when you see that he's maybe under pressure, as you said, and you're using your backhand slice as well as you do. Do you know in your mind that you're able to sort of keep him at bay and getting into a rhythm and finding his? I I didn't I didn't know know that before the match obviously i had a, a fair idea that he wouldn't be that comfortable with it i felt he struggled to generate much pace off my slice so i would i was using that more and more in the match because i didn't feel he was hurting me off it and i actually thought i could get on a fence from from that and that's that's how the match went i think you know if if you look at it i, I sliced well and then ran around and hit hit good forehands and and put him under quite a bit of pressure. Baldo? 
Well, first of all, congratulations to attack Jock uh, uh, all the time like you did. It's great and it was a brilliant game, a brilliant play. Uh, I'd like to know how do you explain to yourself that you may lose to Musetti even if you had four match points uh, last week and then beat the number one in the world. I mean, that's tennis. It can happen, but in your mind, what, what kind of explanation you give? Uh, I mean, it, it happens. Uh, young Massetti should get certain manners on him. How he spoke last week was embarrassing. So, not talk about Massetti in my press conference. Neil? I didn't understand. No, no. Last week he said some things in the Italian press about me that was disrespectful. So. Massetti can, if he apologizes, I will answer. He's a good tennis player, but he's got no manners. Yeah, but that is the problem with Musetti. I'm asking you, uh, what do you, how do you explain the difference performance between that match and today? Then uh, just, what just Musetti says is doesn't concern me. Yeah, just 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 tennis. He he played very well last week, and and I wasn't good enough, and I didn't take this match points, but. Yeah, it's just tennis, but okay. yeah, he could he could do with learning some manners. Okay, okay thanks. Neil? Yeah, hi, Dan. Well played. Because you said in your post-match interview that you get... Sorry, you, Neil, you, can you... Gone... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I've been muted. Sorry. Sorry. Hi, Dan, well played. Because you said in your post-match interview that... Novak kept you waiting at the beginning and that got you fired up. Tell, talk us through what happened and how long you were waiting. Uh, no, I was only, it was a, just a bit of a joke. No, no, it, obviously the match went pretty quick before. And uh, yeah, we were just told a bit of a time and I, you know, I just, I, I was waiting a little bit. It was no big deal, but yeah, no, I was just joking with, I think it was Tim or Amazon, one of them. But you certainly yeah, came yeah. out very quick out of the yeah. blocks, didn't you, and caught him cold? Yeah, I had I had a plan to first few games to take on his second serve, but you know, it's obviously it's a, a little easier said than than done. And you know, he, he I don't want to say he gave me the the gangs. I don't want to speak too bad of him, but you know, he played a pretty not such a good game in the first the first game and sort of settled settled me into the into the match and and I got a, a decent hold on the board and it sort of just settled settled me down into into the court to the surroundings uh everything really and but then obviously I knew he he's obviously going to come start coming back at some point and playing playing some good some good tennis and yeah, I think I did well to to get out the the first set. I think he had break points at four all, and yeah, it was, you know you always know with those top guys that they're gonna they're gonna come back, start coming at you at some point. And I thought you know I, I weathered that the mini storm pretty well. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. Uh, Dan, can you just explain your coaching situation more? I know you're saying that you're working with Nasty Prieto next week, but you're with his brother this week. Yeah, um, yeah. So his brother's a fitness coach. Uh, so yeah, part to work with, not not to work with Sebastian, but basically it was to use a trainer as well and. And he gave me, a, you know, an option or two. And so I took, you know, his brother uh, and he could start before Sebastian. He started, I mean, three days after I agreed with uh, Sebastian that we were going to trial and Sebastian couldn't go from Argentina until I think it's the 19th, which is next Tuesday. I think, I, I mean, regardless, you know, um, so yeah, he's been with me since uh, the last tournament, Sardinia. But he's he's a fitness fitness trainer, and and he, he can hit a few balls and and feed me. So Sebastian's been 
you know, obviously telling him and I've been in conversation with Sebastian every day. And so, yeah, he's been telling him what to work on little things. And, and then I've been speaking to Sebastian about game plan, et cetera, but he starts next week. Amy. Um, congratulations for your win. Uh, you showed today that the slide backhand is a big big on even at a uh, high level. So how do you explain that today almost no one player used uh, this shot like you? And I saw I wanted to know what is your secret for hitting a, a good slice backhand? Um, I mean, it's sort of the, not the only shot, but that was just the shot I, I used quite a bit and it was become effective, I guess, uh, you know, it's a bit better than my top spin backhand to so just try and use it as my, as my strength. Uh, yeah, I mean, it worked, it worked pretty well today, but yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit too predictable if you use it too much. So I think I used it pretty well today and good variation. One last question with Twainy. Then you mentioned earlier that you don't you don't like this one uh, obviously with a with a like this it's um, so it's one on one. Sorry, the connection is, with you is really bad. With Dan, did you? I didn't get that no. again. I said earlier you said that you don't like attention, so I was just wondering why. I just, just don't feel that comfortable with it. Uh, you know, I like to just be with with close people, relax. Yeah. So yeah, it's just sometimes a little embarrassing if people are saying well done too much. It's just the way I feel. It's not. I don't know. I can't help it. Thank you. Thanks, guys.